before we get into today's video, please make sure you go ahead and leave a like on this video to show your support. Please as well, make sure you go and comment and let me know your opinion at the end of the video. And also, please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already to be up to date with all our videos as well. And please click ahead the notification button so you're notified whenever we upload. And lastly, please go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Hello and welcome back to another video on the Rugby Channel and today we are going to be looking at what Round 4 was like with the Guinness Six Nations. There's a lot to talk about, there's some big results and there were some really shocking results as well. And yeah, it's quite a big debate to go on in this video so please stay tuned, we're going to be reviewing all the games. And also, what will happen going into Round 5 of the Six Nations. Okay, so before we review any games, I just want to say that personally... I think the refereeing this weekend was pretty biased, well not biased, but quite bad. I mean there were some calls against Scotland in the Wales v Scotland game that should have really gone Scotland's way, there were some calls against Wales that should have gone Wales's way, and overall it wasn't really to the best that it has been in the past, and yeah, just my personal opinion, I don't think the refereeing has been great. Even in the Ireland game there was knock-ons that weren't seen. There was forward passes I felt that weren't seen either, and there was a lot of decisions that didn't really get anywhere, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say before we got into the games. So let's have a look at our first game, and let's talk about it. Okay, so our first game we're going to be looking at is England versus Italy. Now this was a very one-sided game, and England really showed their sheer dominance when it came to the rugby. As for Italy, I don't know what is happening over there with, well, with that team. I mean, they played well against Ireland and they played well against Wales and I, I don't know where they go from here. I mean, it seems to be whenever they play away, they just don't turn up and they actually seem to play better when Parise isn't playing. So maybe it's time for Parise to leave the Italian team on a high. Uh, he's had some good games over the years and personally I think he's not the player he used to be. And it's just, he's relied on too much. He seems to be everywhere. He'd be passing the ball to the winger and he'd seem to be on the wing. He'd be making kicks and it'd just be losing possession for Italy. So I think for Parise, it's time to retire. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a prime time to do so going into the World Cup. Maybe it's time for somebody else to step up. Who knows? Um, because they didn't have Parise against Ireland and they played pretty well. And I'm pretty sure Parisa didn't play in the Wales game either, and they played quite well. So, I don't know, maybe that's a key element that maybe needs to change. Uh, as for England, their expectations now is they're hoping for Wales to slip up against Scotland, uh, sorry, against Ireland. And uh, hopefully take the title, because nobody's really going to beat England on points difference in the table. Uh, and as of right now, it looks like they probably will get the bonus point against Scotland. Obviously, Ireland are hoping Scotland will do them a favour, but I can't really see that happening personally. In this game, England really set up their game plan really well. They knew what they had to do, and they just got the job done. Italy, on the other hand, you need a lot to improve on, and I don't know, maybe it's time to introduce a relegation system into the Six Nations, because, I don't know, it, it just year after year, they just don't seem to turn up. But that is another debate for another video. We will talk about that in another video so please stay tuned on this channel and subscribe so let's go ahead and look at the second game which was Wales v Scotland and to be honest this was a pretty well a game I didn't really predict to happen uh, Wales really have scraped through this game and they kind of scraped through previous games as well uh, the only real display for Wales I felt was the England game that really shocked me, but then was that because England didn't turn up in the second half? I don't know. Uh, as of this game, uh, Scotland, you played quite well, to be fair. There were some silly handling errors and some key mistakes, like giving away the penalty towards the end as well, which basically killed off the game. But otherwise, Scotland played quite well compared to Wales. Um, as of next week, I think Scotland, unfortunately, aren't going to beat, Eng well, beat England in Twickenham. I think that's going to be too much of an ask for them. Uh, maybe next year when they play them in Scotland, but as of this week, this, as of this year's one, uh, there's no chance, I don't think. Wales versus Ireland, uh, that's going to be a very interesting game. It depends what sort of Wales team turns up. If they turn up like they did against England, then it might be a completely different game. But... Again, that's going to be a 
thing to talk about in the video we have coming up, which will be the predictions for the final round of the Six Nations. So that will be up next week, so please stay tuned for that one. But yeah, overall, with this game, I felt it was quite, well, substandard. It wasn't amazing compared to the other Six Nations games we have seen. And there were so many handling errors on both sides. Scotland really deserved to win that game in the end, but unfortunately they gave away that penalty at the end. And yeah, that's really all it is all to say about this game. So let's go ahead and look at today's game, which was Ireland versus France. This was a game with just sheer dominance with Ireland, and to be honest, France really didn't turn up. I don't understand what happened there. They played well against Scotland, and they played well against Wales. Obviously, it killed off in the second half. And yeah, I just don't understand what has happened to France. Ireland ahead of next week are looking pretty good. They'll be wanting to keep this form going on into the Wales game, so as a Wales fan, I'm quite worried about that. As a France, I don't really know where they should go from here. They just don't seem to really turn up in their away games, kind of like Italy. But not the powerhouse they used to be compared to going back to like the 2011 World Cup and stuff like that. They just, I don't know, they seem to be fading away slowly and they need to sort it out soon because they have some really good players. And yeah, I mean, personally, I think it's the club level in France. You're buying all these foreign people, well, not foreign people, but from different countries and all the money and everything and are they really developing the French players they should be like England do with well is it their 12 clubs they have in the uh, Premiership I think it's 12 clubs and that's what I mean like and most of them would be English the same as the Welsh regions most of them would be Welsh same as Irish regions Scottish regions and I'm pretty sure the French clubs there's not enough youth academy level French players coming through so to be honest I think there's a lot of that needs to be done with the French game and yeah I think maybe change the coach now going into the World Cup because if they play like this in the World Cup they'd be lucky to win at least one game anyway so that's my personal opinion on the French side Ireland looking ahead into the Wales game I'm quite worried about that uh, it's gonna be a very close game and again we'll be talking all about that in next week's video for the predictions of the final round so please stay tuned for that so overall this game was basically just sheer dominance by Ireland and French were very lucky to get the try towards the end uh, yeah I mean I know the level of professionalism and stuff uh, kind of started to fade when they took Sexton and Conor Murray off they still played pretty well though uh, but obviously those players still have a few years under their belts to step up to the place for those players So yeah, that is really all there is to talk about with this one Okay, so without further ado that is going to be the end of today's video Please leave a like if you've enjoyed it and please go ahead as well and leave a comment Let me know what you thought of these games uh, Personally, I think the best game for rugby this weekend was probably the Ireland v France game Although I thought it was very very one-sided and the French team just didn't turn up uh, it was the better ones for rugby. England played well against Italy, but again, with the sheer dominance and stuff, it's just not exciting to watch when it gets past like a 20-point mark against one team. Uh, well, my opinion anyway. Obviously, if you're a supporter of that team, it's quite good to watch, but otherwise, it's just, I don't know, I guess too repetitive. So, yeah, my favourite game this weekend was Ireland v France. Let me know in the comments what your favourite one was. As I said, please go ahead and leave a like, comment as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. We upload loads of weekly uh, rugby videos. And if you're a rugby fan, please go ahead and subscribe. Because, as I said, we're guaranteed at least one rugby video every single week. And, yeah, it's just overall we just have a good laugh and a bit of fun on this channel. So, like the video, comment, subscribe. I've been Andrew, and I will see you in another video. Peace out.